What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 14 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your podcast. Check us every Tuesday and Thursday. If you don't know us, me and Corey are co-founders of Contra Brand Agency, multiple other entrepreneurial endeavors. But here we are here to talk about content, music, business, things that we just love to talk about. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, appreciate y'all for returning. If y'all have listened already, if this is your first time, appreciate you as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And before we get into today's pod, we got a lot of interesting topics for you. Want to make a quick, quick little announcement, right? Now, we've been hit up about this on the back end before. Like, remember, we talked about the music, us having a music agency, and a lot of people hit us with some inquiries. And now we're open to talk about it a little bit more. Um, an opportunity that mm -hmm. that we got coming in this next year, and we want to present it to y'all who are interested. So I'll just say this. If you need a marketing team, we are willing to find the right partner or maybe partners and be their marketing team. Now, this is not for an individual artist. Individual artists, just listen. We love y'all, but just listen. We're talking about a label or a management team who wants a team to focus on their artists day in, day out, go in depth, handle their entire roster and be there. All right now, Shakur, you want to add anything else to that? Oh, uh, no, you hit pretty much the, the point, the, the nail in the head, right? Like, this isn't for necessarily the artist looking for individual marketing services. That's that's pretty much, you know, a norm at this point with the agency. But this is for that. Like you said, that label head, that that management company, you know, maybe even that that distro company that has this roster of five, ten, fifteen artists that need to get shit moving, but they don't feel like they have the time to put the people in place to help them move and right. So we have the infrastructure to handle that many artists. Uh, we have the systems built in place to get things moving. And like you said, we've been asked about it a lot, you know, like a lot more than we even thought it would come up. So we figured. They must be looking for it, right? Like, exactly. got to be other labels and management companies looking for it. If so many keep coming to us asking about it, so All right, that's some shit you feel like you need. Link them in the description, right? We're gonna have to do it. We have to do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the, the contraband link is down there. So. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out and, and and label it well. Make sure probably prioritize it at the top. But exactly what Corey just said, and you know, maybe you are somebody who are starting a label or something and you're looking for a partner from ground up, right? The right situation, that might be a thing where we're actually partnered mm -hmm. up in a company or something. But either way it goes, if you need a full marketing team to handle a roster day in, day out, and really build up, we are here for you. Now, without further ado, let's get into this episode. And as y'all know, we we start off with advice, these episodes. And, and last time, we actually introduced a new way of handling, handling it which is rate the advice. We want to know y'all's opinions on the advice that we present, right? Now, <laughs> the advice that we got here is from none other than Dave Peters. Now, if y'all know Dave Peters, he's Mike Dimes' manager. Uh, we actually got a chance to chop it out, chop it up with Dave. Uh, shout out to you at the writer's camp for since the 80s last week. A lot of dope conversations happened there, but he talked about something that he does um, for artists or the approach that he takes when it comes to his artists. And that approach, here's the advice, all right, get ready for it, is simply using the term rising artist when you get on blog pages, let's just say, what, Say Cheese? Our Generation Music. Our Generation Music, Underground Sound, all those pages, right? You get on Instagram and they're talking about you. Now, why is he using the term rising artist? Well, he talked about the fact that, look, you got this random artist coming out of nowhere and you just try to present them like they're somebody. Why are people going to care? Why should they care that you, th why should they care that something's happening to you or for you? Or are they going to believe it? Say that again. Or will they believe it? Or will they believe it, yeah. right? That's the big, I think that's the big, one of the biggest ones. And the reality <laughs> is they won't. We already know. They will not. And as a result, you get hate thrown at you. Just hate, 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 right? Like just all Who that. Is this it's, guy? it's everywhere. Who is this guy? <laughs> they talking about you. They turned up. But you disarm them if you say rising artist. Just present a little truth, right? So if you say they're you're, if you say you're rising or your artist is rising in the presentation, people don't expect to know about you, right? 
So it doesn't come off as pushy as an ad. It doesn't come off as if you're trying to present yourself as someone you're not. That's it. Like, that's the simple advice. It's small, but I think that tweak, when I heard it personally, right, mm-hmm. I thought that that was great advice. What did you, you think? Yeah, I mean, I was I was conflicted on it at first. Okay. I'll say why in a sec. But I think is the bigger good advice is be cognizant of the people on the other side of the post, right? Yes. And how they're going to take it. Because what I always tell clients is we have to think about the people paying attention to these pages. This is my favorite music blog page. I see this shit every day, yep. eight, ten times a day. Now when this random person that shows up on my timeline that, mind you, I've never seen before. Because mm-hmm. once again, I pay attention to this page every day. I'm immediately going to have my doubts, my concerns, maybe even some negative thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just brewing up, just itching to come out my my fingers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like you said, it's just to where it's like, okay, well, this person is rising. Well, I don't need to have the same expectations of them that I might have of, of Travis Scott or something, right? right. Or now I know I might not. I might not am supposed to know who this person is because they are rising, right? And they're mm-hmm. they're this platform is highlighting them for X Y Z reason. So I do think it does a good job of disarming people there. The part of it I would kind of argue against is that I do think sometimes it can be detrimental for that exact reason, right? Because you are immediately are painting yourself to this community as like. I guess the struggling artist per se, right? Or maybe as mm. someone who doesn't already have momentum or motion or I, I, I should be paying attention to. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I, I can see the double side of it. Cause I've had posts before where I've looked at on those pages where it says like exactly that, like rising rapper from Atlanta drops new video. Mm. And the first thing that comes in my head is like, oh, this is a probably a small to new artist because if they right. weren't small to new, they would have never used that language, right? right. So yeah. I do think there are certain specific scenarios where it can be detrimental. Um, probably like once you start creeping out of that, I would argue like that 50 to 100K consistent like monthly listener point, probably when you want to start like slowly leaving it behind, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I do think up until that point, like it's 100% correct. Like it's a very, a very great way to yeah. disarm people. Yeah. That's a great point because it's all, all of this stuff is strategic, right? It's not mm-hmm. yeah one size fits all. And if you have numbers to show for it on another platform, like Spotify, like you basically, like you reference, then don't use that because yeah, people might say, who is this? I don't know who this is, but they can always go down a rabbit hole and find out, oh, somebody's fucking with this person already, mm. right? And figure that out. But if they're brand new, mm-hmm. and I think it also depends on what you're saying as well, mm-hmm. right? Like if you're like, yo, this person's project's coming out this Friday. Why the fuck do I care? Who is this, yeah. right? If you say, I don't know, Lil Uzi's dropping a project this Friday, then I'm going to care just off of the strength that it's a little oozy, right? Yeah. You have to establish a relationship for something that basic to be. So you need to also be in front of them for a reason that's that's worth it to the general public, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the quality of your music or whatever that post is about, but like if it has your music in it, that's also going <laughs> to push people one way or another. Yeah. It's like, up, upcoming artists, hmm, okay, I think he's small. But I listen. Okay, this shit hard though, and yeah. all that goes out the out the window. It is trash. I'd say it, if it's trash, it does help because it's at least you say, all right, this is an upcoming artist. I understand why. You know, bad. I understand <laughs> why it's bad. I still might say it's trash and not support and be like mean, <laughs> but it, it's not going to be the same level as if they lied, tried to lie to me and present yeah. who they were, right? Yeah. Like that's and I'm just thinking from a fan standpoint who's just watching, that's that's where it's going to come. So it helps in that way. But I think the overall is what you said. Mm. Just be cognizant of who you're speaking through through each of these pages and how you're presenting yourself. Because even that, you can present yourself as, let's say, rising or upcoming, right? But you don't have to do that for eternity, right? You might mm. do that three or four times on a page or a few pages, run those rounds, and then like after three months, you don't ever use that term again because mm-hmm. now they at least they're aware of you. Mm-hmm. Type and thing. That community specifically. Right, yeah. that community yeah. specifically. So I think, yes, of course the advice isn't one size fits all, but I think the sentiment and the real advice, so this is the part that y'all should be rating more than anything, mm-hmm. is what your Corey said, which is just be aware who you're talking to and how that impacts them based on the words you're using. So- Again, rate that advice, people. You know, give it a one to ten. Let me know. 
let us know. Put it in the comment section. You know what I mean? And like and comment while I'm talking about commenting. Because, you know, those comments and those likes, they give love to the video and make sure it gets seen by other people. And if it ain't seen by enough people, we ain't going to keep doing these things, man. We ain't doing it for not for our health. All right? Now, <laughs> speaking of the writer's camp, as we said, it was since the 80s writer's camp. Really dope writer's camp. Uh, if y'all don't know the roster of of since the 80s they have a lot of artists obviously jid is yeah jd earth game yeah mike doms uh i always forget how to say her name and, and just and just zoma njzoma oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've yeah. never actually said it out loud so yeah so fago you know what i'm saying probably the most noble probably jld earth game so fago yep yeah yep so them right um it was all last week we were up there a, a few different times and occasions and that was one of the conversations that happened while we were there just on the side and there's a couple other ones that we want to touch on a couple <laughs> other ones a lot of great conversations a lot, a lot of great conversations <laughs> this one here is do you have to be crazy to be an artist I want you to stop and think about that for a second and then we're going to go into detail in terms of like the, the kind of crazy that was presented but overall it no, came down at no, it was you have to be crazy to be a superstar artist. A superstar artist? Yeah, that was the combo. It was like okay. well, I mean, I still do think you have to be kind of crazy to be a kind of artist. Yeah. Like at least a little bit crazy to be an artist. Cause you gotta yeah. be crazy even when to attack everything that's about to come from the moment you hit upload, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and what might come from that event. If shit I always tell artists, bro, like there are a lot of artists I think get into the game romanticizing what it's like mm -hmm. to be a popular artist because you yeah. don't know anything yet. And then you yeah. get into you're like, oh, this shit a lot of work. Yeah. This shit is stressful. Oh, it's a thousand people trying to talk to me at all times. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They just want to know everything I'm doing. And it's like, damn, this shit sucks. And it's like, yeah, bro, you know, man. And then you ended the sea. So, yeah. you know, that's how I think. Like, you got to be kind of crazy to be want to be an artist. But the point they was making about being a celebrity, wanting to be a celebrity, like a superstar, you have to really be insane mm. to be want to be a celebrity. Or a superstar. That's true. Yeah. That's true. One of the quotes was came down to this. You have to be crazy to think that everybody fucks with you. Yeah, exactly. Because of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it came down to. Right? And then narcissism was a, a word that got used. What do you think about that? No, I agree, bro. Like, like think about the type of person like that was saying. That just walks around and someone's like, you like it, you like it, you gonna like it. And if that over everybody over there just heard it, they will also like it. You they know, don't, they don't get me if they don't like me. Yeah, exactly. It's like I don't think there are too many art forms that are like that outside of music. Like I, I don't think I've ever heard any of my like art friends, like painting visual art friends, ever like expect everyone in the gallery to like their piece necessarily. Mm. Right, I've never expected okay. my dance friends to expect everybody to want to show up to the dance recitals. Music artists, bro, are my music artist friends? No, they were expecting everybody to play that shit for to fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yo, this shit hard, right? This shit hard, right? Yeah, I could get with that. I could get with that, <laughs> especially when you talk about the celebrity level. And I think once you talk about celebrity level, it actually goes beyond music mm -hmm. because you can be a celebrity politician celebrity yeah. actor right because there's all those levels once you hit that celebrity level there's definitely a sense of thinking completely differently and i'm not talking about that cool marketed think yeah. different type <laughs> shit no we're not talking about apple we're just talking about you know your rocker is a different rocker yeah, your you know brain I mean? really wired a little different yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you might not be off your rocker your rocker just might be a different color you know what i'm saying yeah. so it, and i you know we can always go to the extreme where there's Kanye, like that's an example, mm -hmm. right? But I don't think there's anything to gain from that conversation. I think the gain comes from the in-betweens. Like who doesn't present themselves in this way that's so brash and obviously shaking the table in some kind of way, but still is a narcissist quote uh, in, in some form or fashion. Like people love Rihanna. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And everything about her image is like down to earth, but I'm still that bitch at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Is she crazy? Well, see, right? I was going to say, that's what makes it them crazier is when they're right. Because there are certain <laughs> groups of artists that are right, bro. And like everyone that comes across it for whatever reason loves it. Like a Rihanna. Rihanna's a great example. I've, I haven't, 
I won't say everyone I know is a mega Rihanna fan, but I've never met anyone that like hated Rihanna's music, you know what I'm saying? Or thought it was bad or whatever. You might not mm-hmm. have your you might not like all her music, but all of us got a favorite Rihanna song. You know what I'm saying? Like, like all of us could think of one Rihanna song we fuck with heavy. Okay. And if you okay. say you don't, you're lying. So, no, you know no, 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 <laughs> no. I, I would never. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> well, even not even count. you specifically. Okay, I'm just yeah. gonna have the comments. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you know, say you don't, you're lying. Be somebody yeah. in the comments that says something like that. But hey, <laughs> reveal yourself if you are one of these folks who don't have one Rihanna song. And I think there's a qualifier because you don't have to just like people's music and don't like Rihanna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Fair. Because that's another thing, just brand wise. I personally haven't met anybody that like that hates Rihanna. Then you know, like they find her to be likable. They might not be you know super stand following her, but like, oh yeah, she's cool. Especially in contrast to other celebrities, mm-hmm. right? She's one of those brands. So that's what I feel like that conversation is more interesting. Somebody that you can't point to all these stereotypical things and be like, oh, they're crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, does to be Rihanna, do you have to be crazy? Jay Z, you hear people say all these things like he's a narcissist, da, 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 da. so like you can go off the strength of like what other people say about him if you know if you want to just do that. But the way he carries himself, well, I know a lot of people say his business moves are you know they try to say narcissistic or, or for self, but generally his affect and how he presents himself in a room, I wouldn't find him. And I wouldn't say that, oh, you're just this narcissist, da 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 Maybe because of my personality, because that's one of them personalities where some people feel like, oh, you're being condescending. Mm. But the way I think of myself, it's hard to find someone talking to me condescending because <laughs> it's like, you can't be talking to me that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so I don't, it's not like, I don't know. I think, I, yeah, Jay-Z, I, I don't know. I hear enough about him. Again, this is Obviously, we not know him, but a lot of people feel that way about him. <sighs> but yeah, I really don't have. Do you get that vibe though, just from hearing him talk, like his regular personality? Yes. In what way? I would love to hear it. Like, I think Jay Z's had enough business success where, in his head, he can't really do too much wrong. Like, I don't think he thinks he's completely immune to to bad. Ah, okay, that's to, different. Yeah. That's different. You know, I don't think he thinks he's immune to bad. He has one of those, like you know, every couple of years, but it's like. It's like, bro, if I've swung 20 times and, like, 13 of them have been out the park, bro, like, it's only so much you can say to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's only it's only, it's only, only so much I'm going to listen to people telling me this ain't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it kind of goes back to that uh, conversation we had about the influencers and making music, right? Well, I was saying that if you have this person that has sold chicken nuggets and hats and socks and shit to people, like, what, what's going to make them think they can't sell music, right? So I look yeah. at Jay-Z the same way, bro. I've sold alcohol. I've sold clothing. Yeah. I've sold music. I've sold businesses, I've sold art, I've sold land. <laughs> <laughs> what is there out there to make me believe that I can't do whatever the fuck I want to do? And yeah, like, but, but, art, but where's the line between narcissism and confidence in that? I don't think there is a line between it. I think narcissists have a lot of confidence. I don't. I, but do confident people have narcissism? Probably. See, this I think, is where, it, I think it's safe to say yes. This is where we have to look up the, the definition of narcissism. Because I actually remember seeing Gary Vee one time um, say that he always thought that he was a narcissist. Like he would say that, like, oh, and, like own it based off of the general understanding. Mm. But then he looked at the definition and stuff one day and was like, wait, no, nah, I don't identify with, with that. Person. So oh. a person who has an excessive interest or admiration of themselves. That's the shorthand, right? I ain't know. Ex- ex- excessive is, is uh, what is it? It's subjective. Bro. Oh, that's artist, bro. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> all right, not, all right. How about narcissist <laughs> traits? I think that's probably where he kind of like didn't have as much of a gap. I'm mean, uh, uh, see. bro, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We Uh-oh. in there. Oh, yeah. That's the all one. Right. <laughs> have an unreasonably high sense of self-importance and require excessive admiration. Okay. Feel that they deserve privileges and special treatment. Mm. Expect to be recognized as superior even without in- in- <laughs> achievements. Oh, well, that's Google page. Spin. Uh okay, okay. Make now you gotta read the last one. The last one's important too. Make achievements <laughs> and talents seem bigger than they are. 
Give me an example. That's all of them, bro. That's that's every artist, bro. That now I take it back. It's not even a successful artist anymore. The narcissist. It's all artists at this point. <laughs> oh man, who knew we were going down this rabbit hole today? <laughs> Let's look. We gotta we gotta keep going with these. Let me see. Be preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. Oh, that's interesting. A perfect mate come in. Believe they are superior to others and can only spend time with or be understood by equally special people. <laughs> bro, that's what I'm saying, hey, bro. That shit, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. All of them, bro. I love I, I love it. That's hilarious Every just to read. Okay. Okay. So you you can you you can give your time to the peasants, Jacory? King yeah. Jacory? Yeah, 100 percent You know what I'm saying? I'm always down for the people. Come on, King, man. You, know what I'm saying? You, know? you don't want to waste your time on these people, King. No, bro. Sometimes you gotta walk <laughs> through the lands, you know what I'm saying, to see what's going on, bro. Survey your landscape. See what's see, up. That's where I have a problem with that, right? Right? <laughs> Cause you could spend that time, right? And you could be looking at it like that. It's like, oh yeah, I'm granting these people with my presence today. But that <laughs> all right, now if we want to go to uh Jay-Z then. He said, my presence is a present. So I guess that does fall in, under that category of how a narcissist might think. Exactly, bro. Right? Yeah, he Are said you that. lucky to even be around me? Yeah. I don't think he said him and Obama. He he Jay-Z has had maybe one or two Kanye-esque analogies that he didn't get Kanye uh, pushback for. Like comparing himself to somebody or the way he like talked mm. about something. I, I, will, I will say that. And, and that's somebody who really, really loves Jay Z's music. But that's because his comparisons usually like make sense if you really like. Like, like you can, that's you can, you can draw the line between A and B pretty quickly. And and that, yeah. If it makes sense, <laughs> what's the problem, right? What's the problem? <laughs> but you know, all right. So let's let's see what else we got. Behave in an arrogant way. Brag a lot. I mean, that's rappers. Uh, well, a lot of rappers, right? And come across as conceited. Hell, the rappers are. Be envious of others and believe others envy them. That's rap. That's that's rap foundation one hundred and one. That is that is facts, <laughs> man. Everybody ops. All right, invest in having the best of everything. For instance, the best car or office. <laughs> it's funny how detailed this is getting, but it is describing. At the same time, people with narcissistic personality disorder, disorder have trouble handling anything they view as criticism. They can become impatient or angry when they don't receive special recognition or treatment. Mm. Yeah, we getting in there. Have major <laughs> problems interacting with others and and easily feel slighted. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of to the fullest, though. He do be like this. Whenever someone doesn't agree, he be going straight to like offended. How dare you question my views? React with rage or contempt. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and try to belittle other people who make themselves appear as superior. Oh, you can't be superior to me. Have difficulty managing their emotions and behavior experience see all right what about that somebody like jay-z all right let's go back to that category the way he's had to move and get to where he is he's had to do a lot of emotional management i mean you ain't gotta be shooting 100 you, you know gotta shoot 100 yeah, you ain't gotta be shooting right. 100 you know he might be a b level yeah um, a narcissist <laughs> not, hey bro a narcissist would take offense to that <laughs> i'm not the best narcissist nigga what you mean <laughs> Experience major problems dealing with stress and adapting to change. Huh, that's interesting. I don't even know how to unpack that one. Let's see. Withdraw from or avoid situations in which they might fail. Mm. I call that smart to a certain extent. You know what I mean? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like after they they say this about especially like competitive people or just and especially as you get older and they invest less in things that they can lose. Yeah. Because it's just like, why do it? Yeah, why take the risk? Yeah, I don't, so, to me, that's pretty logical. I mean, yeah. nobody said no narcissist was stupid. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. But I guess maybe the reason, right? I, they're not going to invest in a, something they might fail because of the look of it. Yeah, exactly. That's probably what it is. Be a chip in the armor. Yeah, you know, yeah, No yeah. chips in the armor. <laughs> Which, I got. with that being said, Andrew Schultz had a a very clean way of describing Kanye and what he's going through today. Now, whether you disagree or not, folks who are listening, that's besides the point. But I love the analogy. He talked about how Kanye has, you know, blown up with his um, sampling, right? Mm. As a producer, taking all these sounds from different places and sampling them Mm. and then making magic, right? Yeah. And he said, well, Kanye is finding that he's not as good as sampling people's thoughts as he is as sampling people's music and sounds and putting them together and presenting them. Mm, damn. I thought that was a good ass yeah. like metaphor analogy, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, 
hey, whether you agree or not, whatever. But no, nah, that shit was beautiful. He's like, he's sampling these people's thoughts and is not being communicated and hit the same as his music. He's not, he not making hits. Yeah. I'm like that, that, that's very fair. And hey, look, people who argue that though, I say this all the time that Kanye says several times, he don't read. So oh, he has that. to be getting thoughts from somewhere. Must be people. So <laughs> that is in line with that analogy. Whether you like the outcome of his his sampling or not, or his new production, he is getting his thoughts from other people. Um, but anyway, besides the point, let's read these last two. Withdraw. No, feel depressed or end moody because they fail short. They oh my, feel depressed and moody because they fall short of perfection. Yep. Check. Have secret feelings of insecurity, shame, humiliation, and fear of being exposed as a failure. Check all of them. All right. This ain't even to be this. Ain't, this this ain't even anymore about the superstar thing. This is just this is just R to a T at this point. Oh man! So now it's like you already, you know, what I'm saying, you know, kind of a little 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 off just for wanting to be an artist, oh. and then now you want to be a superstar artist, bro. You want. You want four year olds to walk by and recognize you, and you want like grandparents in the supermarket, be like, oh, you, you that guy from the right. You're like, that's what you want, but that's what you want your day to day life. Most yeah. people seek peace and to mm. not stand out, mm. but artists already inherently stick to stand out. Superstar artists stick to stand out from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, not even yes. just other artists, just like everything. Yes. And that's a little, that's a little insanity. You know what I'm saying? That I can see that. You, you, you touched on something. Most people seek peace. Yeah. All right. And there's an idea that the reason most people seek peace, right? And most people don't seek to stand out is because standing out brings the opposite of peace. Yeah. It Dang causes it. trouble. Yeah. Right. You go back to nature, you stand out, you're a lick. Yeah. Right. Now you are prey. There's a risk that comes with that. However, the reward is if you're able to stand out and survive that, then by golly, you the king of the jungle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, golly. So that's what those people are seeking, but you it, it takes a lot that, that comes with it. I think that was the that, that might have been the the zebra analogy, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Um remember I talked to you about that? Yeah. So yeah, for those of y'all who who don't know the zebra comparison or analogy, they say, you know, zebras have these stripes. All right. And then you look at zebras and you look at the Sahara and you say, well, what the hell kind of camouflage is this? Because that only makes them stand out. But it's not about the context of the zebra with the environment it's in. It's more of the context of zebras versus zebras. Mm -hmm. Right. Because zebras move in packs. I don't know. They call them packs, but, you know, packs, schools, whatever you want to call it. All right. They move together. And. Because of that, when lions are chasing them, they blend in, all right? All of the zebras blend in together, so they can't say, yo, bro, like, I want that one, because they're all moving, and, like, I'm like, yo, Ja'Cory, we're going to get that one. Ja'Cory, like, what one, bro? Which one are you talking about? I'm <laughs> like, that one? He's like, no, nah, bro, you talking about that one? And they, they, they moving, we can't keep up. However, one that gets injured, all of a sudden, they stand out from the rest of the zebras, mm -hmm. right? So now I say the one that's hobbling, bro, right there. Corey's like, I got you, dog. Run it down, hit a lick, right? So them moving, their camouflage again is them. But once something stands out, even in nature, it it it, it means you're in dangerous position. And when you relate that back to the artist, and you hear this narcissism thing, ah oh, man, it means. The only reason that you would stand you so does that mean only a narcissist would want to stand out? Is that what that means? I don't think so. No, I think I don't know, man. I think everyone has a little piece of them that wants to stand out. I think every person kind of is one way or another. We've all in our life felt overlooked. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It felt like maybe not enough people were yes. paying attention to us or giving us our due respects for the yes. things that we do. Yep. I feel like artists are not the only ones. Because I would throw artists and like entrepreneurial people in kind of like the same boat. You know what I'm saying? People are looking to like build and, and build around. Like build something and then build something around it. Like yep. kind of artists, entrepreneurs, yeah. entertainers. All this, like people in that box are the groups of people who, like you said, are willing to fight through the primal instinct not to do that shit and figure it out. 
even though we know that at the other end of it, you are now a lick to all these people that you don't even see. Yeah. Which is the craziest part about being a any not even just a celebrity, just yeah. anyone with an audience, bro. Yes. Like there are literally tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions of people out there who know everything about you. They know what you like to eat, your favorite snacks, <laughs> what shirt you like to wear on your so live stream the most, off, bro. bro. <laughs> I love potatoes, nigga. <laughs> And it's like, bro, they know all this shit about you and you don't know anything about them. Yeah. But like, how many times have people walked up to you and been like, oh, bro, like, yo, the last week or two months ago, you was talking about this and this live stream. And what did you mean about that? You're like, bro, you mean that live stream from mm-hmm. months ago, bro, that you just watched last night that I was yeah. just, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you get that, bro. Yeah. It's like, it takes a special type of person to want more of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, in that case. Yes. I, are we, are we I, I knew you was about to ask, bro. I are knew you was about to say. on it. narcissism being a good thing? <laughs> I don't think it's the worst. <laughs> you know I'm mean? like, I don't know. It sounds like narcissism equates to bravery. That's what that sounds like. No, but no, I, I, I get it. That's that is very interesting. That yeah. there's that double edged sword in that case. I, of course, I think you could want to stand out for purposes too, right? If you yeah. look at Martin Luther King, he was put in that position. He wasn't necessarily like, yo, I'm about to be the dude to save the world. I got the best perspective, you know, like on some Kanye stuff. It was yeah. more like, hey, we're training you, breeding you, and like take this position because we see the talents in you. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the purpose also can fuel that. But if we go back to insecurity, because I was going to say what you said, you said people have had this feeling of being overlooked. Everybody's experienced that in some way, mm-hmm. for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. But if I'm operating for that from that place, that goes under the definition of insecurity, yeah. right? And now I'm trying to be seen. I'm trying to make sure people understand what I I want to say because I've been un- misunderstood. I've been overlooked. So it doesn't sound like my, no, well. I mean, I think that is obvious, right? Like, like, oh, yeah, real, real deep conclusion and revelation, Sean. But <laughs> I'm just like, I, I, I was, I wanted to be willing to explore. Like, is this could be a good, could this be a good thing in some ways, right? What, what are the redeeming qualities of narcissism? Ultimately, of course, it's it's a bad thing. It's a sick sickness. But then, ultimately, at the at the end of it all, it sounds like there's a spectrum. Yeah. And I'm almost with. If you don't have any bit, if, if this is the pure de- definition, maybe we just call it something else because, you know, mar- narcissism has this rightly, rightfully so bad stigma. Y- you need to have a little bit of it in you. Yeah. That's why I said, like, I don't think, I don't think you got to be batting a hundred. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, man, like my, my mom was like a child psychologist. So like it's, it's a lot of these terms and things I'm just used to reading like her books and shit and like that's yeah. how she would break it down like it's a spectrum like it's more about the intent of like the behavior like the behavior itself mm-hmm. doesn't make you good or bad it's about like what you do with it right like some narcissists just want to open you know the best charity foundation for whatever cause they believe in it's not inherently bad right versus there's a narcissist that maybe wants to climb to the top of the corporate ranks and he wouldn't have burned the whole fucking building down on the way up there you know what i'm saying that now that person you, you make some arguments for it, you know what i'm saying make some arguments about it. so it's a spectrum. Though. That's why I don't think it's inherently good or bad. I don't think artists even feel like that artists might be insane for wanting to chase the thing is good or bad. I just need you to know where you stand, bro. You're not, you're not normal, but you're an artist, so you already knew that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> that 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 yeah. is true. At this point, you should know that, that you're true. not normal. You know what I'm saying? That so, is true. No, not to shit. We 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 fall in the same boat, bro. You know. Think about how crazy we gotta be to wake up and be like, man, I'm gonna give some advice, and somebody gonna listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gonna do it and it's gonna work that out. That's fair enough. That, that, that is <laughs> somebody gonna work out. <laughs> uh, no, I, I could get with that. I, I could get with, you know, definitely we have a, a different apprehension though towards yeah, like, people pulling up to us on the street and everything though, yeah. than most people. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> but they, okay, uh, touche, touche. So hey, we we understand y'all then. That yeah, point. Yeah, like, we get we get y'all. Yeah. Y'all might be a little bit wilder, but. But we get y'all. We, we all in the y'all. same boat, riding towards the same shore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and me, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a competitive person. So, like, does that, this competition, the reason for wanting to win have to be narcissism? Or could you just want to be number one just because you like to be number one? 
there. I don't know. That sounds narcissistic. But, yeah, man. But it can't man, be. Man, you got to unpack it. Like, why do you want to be number one? Uh, Where did it start? That's that shit I'm not ready for. You Next saying, subject. Bro. Yeah, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> that's when we need a better help uh, sponsorship. You know what I'm saying? To push us to. Hey. So, though, is that what it's called? Better help? It is better yeah, help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is better help, bro. We, we should do a whole live pod session, bro. Better helping on. They haven't done that, man. They won't. They yeah. haven't, bro. I ain't seen nobody. Uh, a live therapy session. I can't say that. There was a conference one time I remember seeing them be the sponsor, like a music conference. I can't say that. Well, no, I'm not saying like better help sponsoring this kind of space. I mean, like, oh, that if, type of if conversation. we recorded an episode yeah. and we had our therapy <laughs> session <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually streamed on the episode, that might be interesting. You know, that would be wow. That would be. I wild. would watch that. I would love to watch that. I don't know, man. We might trying, need to do that. I'm trying to think of who I know. They got some some clear surface level issues that need to be talked about that I'll watch that for. Probably like Drake or something. Well, if you think about it, that's what the Iyanla Fix My Life series is about. People watching people's therapy yeah, sessions. Yeah, right? Because right, yeah. I think Waka Flocka was on there. Like yeah. all these type of people. Like right? Chief Keeper or some shit. Yeah. yeah. And then there was like that other series that was like a relationship camp that Soldier Boy and Walker were on, you know? So oh, nah, people- I ain't see that one. That content is out there. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a whole, probably VH1 or one of those kind of channels, but it was a whole series where it was like all these couples that were like hip hop couples and some relationship. Yeah, bro. I watch people, their issues, yeah. I watch people get their life together. Hope I get some free advice in there so I ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, pay for it. Yeah, like, yeah. Man. Damn, that's love to like watch me. other people's you know problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. I can learn something from this episode. But, but so- <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I don't know. I, so it's already been done. The the marketplace is already validated. We just need to actually reach out for the sponsorship. <laughs> if anybody knows, uh, if you a therapist and for better help, or you know one of their competitors, you know what I'm saying. We don't we don't have any you know side we pick. We we pick that money, whichever one y'all got. We willing to do that as well. Now. <laughs> Part of the interruption, I have to take this quick commercial break to let you know that we are sponsored by me because I signed myself. We signed ourselves. It's Brand Man Network. That's why we're called No Labels Necessary because no label, nobody else is necessary for us to get the train moving. So if you could just subscribe to show appreciation, we'd really appreciate that. Back to the program. Last subject from the writer's camp. It's, I think we're going to be short on I don't know. Maybe you got you can have some unpacking to do. But that question of digital marketing, does it matter? Mm. That was a legit question at this camp. Talking to the digital marketers, ar- I, arguing <laughs> that digital market. That, that is, <sighs> you know, I didn't know how to take that for a second. Man. So are you want me to argue my position? Is that what it is? Or... You know what I mean? Do you genuinely believe this doesn't uh, digital marketing it doesn't matter? I didn't know how to take that one, so I was actually asking questions to see truly what he thought. I didn't really care to argue and say it mattered. I just, I really just wanted to understand the mindset of someone who might actually um, genuinely oppose digital marketing, and it was, it was definitely a learning experience. I always appreciate that. But what, what do you think about that conversation? I, I could, I could see where, where they were coming from. Because I think the argument was digital marketing doesn't work for the average small artist because the average small artist doesn't have the things in place to make digital marketing work. Which is, I don't know if you remember, that's where it looped back to it. He was saying, like, it doesn't work because you need the content and you need the branding to a degree. And you need, you know, even sometimes the image can play a part in it. Things that an artist at a certain level may not have figured out, to which we then argue is that the digital marketing that doesn't work then, or is it just the artist, right? Mm. The point I would still make. But I do get, right? Because I think about how many campaigns we've had with smaller artists that maybe were missing two of the three things, and we would see it not work to the degree of the artist that we saw should have all of the three things put in place or maybe even have long been established within those different things, right? They already happen to like, you know, pretty much we always say like an artist with a fan base, like a, a good fan base, those are the easiest marketing campaigns. You know what I'm saying? Like easy. Like bro, just, you set some buttons up, shit just start growing. You know what I'm saying? It should start working out because they have so many of the boxes already ticked off. And the artist that doesn't have those boxes ticked off, we can set those same things up, exact same strategies. Shit don't start moving from day one. Now we're more so trying to figure out 
what in the pipeline is stopping you from having the same results as this person over here? Maybe it is your image. Maybe it is your content quality. Maybe the song is trash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But those are still things that, like I said, I would argue it's not the, the digital marketing doesn't work. It's like a car, bro. Like, I can have the fastest car in the world. But that shit could go zero to 250 in, in 1.5 seconds. If I put fucking milk in that car, that shit ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if I put, if I put water in the tank. That shit ain't going nowhere, bro. Like, right vehicle, right structure to get me from where I need to go very fast, but I'm feeding it the wrong materials. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Dang, man. <laughs> that was a great analogy. I want y'all to know that came that off was, the top of the that head. That was a beautiful one, yeah, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm just going to start calling people <laughs> with bad music milk, man. I'm like, hey, bro, this is some milk. It's just to be real <laughs> with you. And they're going to have to figure it out. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's like, bro, the Ferrari gassed up, bro. Like, we ready to go, bro. You just put milk in that bitch, bro. I can't take you. I can't take you to the other side. So, nah, I'm with that, bro. 100. <laughs> percent Like, I think I can't really add much to that. All I'll say is, if you're the time, if you're a ground zero artist, I still think marketing, digital marketing, can work for you. It's just the perspective that you take on what digital marketing is. Because mm-hmm. most people think digital marketing has to cost money, which it doesn't. Mm-hmm. All right? So you can build relationships. You can hop in collaboration videos. Of course, for some people, y'all might not have those relationships, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't get, get access to that. But that's still categorized as digital marketing, right? Um, creating TikToks, right, to get my initial awareness that's digital marketing and that's free, mm-hmm. right? So it does work. You can't say awareness doesn't work, right? To say d- digital marketing doesn't work is to say marketing doesn't work to me, mm-hmm. right? Because all it is is awareness at the awareness level. Then when you get to the consideration level, all it is is consideration, right? It's just that function. But in the same way, in the old school, you know, you can put flyers up. Mm-hmm. And then nobody show up. No one show up, right? <laughs> you can blast your shit on the block, and nobody care to hear it. Yeah, right. So it all comes down to the milk. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, th- and I think you made a point too of like it, the different expectations of, of, of every level, right? So with the artist that's oh, at complete yeah. ground zero, of course we want to see results, right? Like we want to see things grow, but I'm not expecting shit to just start taking off from day one. A, a ground zero artist, I think it's more about understanding who are the people that could potentially like you. And it might take us a lot to get to that point, right? So, like, your $1,000 might not go as far as this other artist's $1,000 because their audience is figured out, right? Like, we already know exactly what to dial in and what needs to be done to possibly scale. Yep. You, we still figuring out, right? Or the, the second artist, they could have been on a, on a five, six-month campaign and they're ready to start scaling things up versus you on week one, bro. You're not ready to get to the point to where they're at. So, I do think like with artists even trying to gauge is digital marketing like worth it for them in their career? I think it's important to understand like what you're looking for. Mm. Are you trying to understand your audience? Well, you're going to have to understand that it's going to be a lot of data that you bring it in that might not be as valuable because you, you just, you just trying to sift through it and figure out who likes you. Right. Or are you an artist that already has an audience and you understand that you're trying to find more people like them. Right. Cool. Your campaign might look a little bit different. Are you an artist that's already mega established and, Audience ain't even what you're looking for. Like we talked about on one episode about like Drake and he probably don't care about streaming numbers at this point, right? If we were to do a campaign for Drake, I would assume he would have much different expectations on the other end of it than if we were doing an artist for Lil Who the Fuck, whatever, that just dropped their first song today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be looking for two completely different metrics of success, you know what yep. I'm saying? Points of success. So I think that to me is what it comes down with digital marketing. I think a lot of artists, even teams, tend to go into it with like a, like the same, looking for the same response on the other side of it mm. um, or looking for that same impact on the other side of it which with marketing we know that very rarely happens like marketing campaigns are like snowflakes you know what i'm saying it's very rare two two of them look alike yep um and, and produce the same results but then even that they should be even judged the same way right like, like i said i could look at three different campaigns with the exact same budget spin across three different tiers of artist levels and i'm ex- i'm i have different methods of success for each of them yo artists with no fans Yo, the fact that you went from zero monthly listeners to 800 monthly listeners is, is, is amazing. You got the 800% plus increase, you know what I'm saying? Versus yep. like if RSC with 100,000 monthly listeners or a million monthly listeners only got 800 monthly listener increase, it'd be different over there, right? But oh, no, this shit was a drop, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit. This, so right. I think that's what, to me, hurts that argument a lot. Is we have to first, and every artist has to look in the mirror and look at your campaign and go like, did this campaign not work? 
because this medium I chose chosen truly doesn't work, or did I not do everything on my end I could do to make it work as best as it possibly can? Because those are two different two different things, right? Or did I do the right shit? Period. Yeah, exactly. Right? Or even that, did I pick the right shit to start exactly. with? Exactly. Yeah. Because you mentioned Drake, we wouldn't even recommend the same stuff for mm-hmm. Drake as we would for little nobody, yeah. right? So Drake. We'll probably be very PR and narrative driven mm-hmm. because we know streams are going to come for Drake. Yeah. Right. But if Drake gets streams without a moment, that doesn't feel like a win for yeah. Drake. Yeah. Right. Because you have to maintain cultural relevance. That's a part of where he is in a game. But you have some artists that can just do 100 million streams and man, they are elated. Mm-hmm. Top of the world. Right. So, of course, Drake does want to have his streams, but that's like a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a part of it. That's not the conversation. You should know we need to hit these streams. We need to figure out how we can make a conversation off of whatever I'm doing. So, you have that. And then the last thing goes down to, you know, those expectations for the amount of money specifically spent. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge part of why people will say it's not worth it. But that's why I go back to everything doesn't even take money and time. Everything. Is it doesn't take a lot of time, but then also some things will take more time. So I think the time and money it thing is the biggest part that comes down to why people say it's not worth it. Yeah, and definitely time too. Because I mean, like we always say, bro, like most of our most successful campaigns take like three months plus mm-hmm. to really work. Like it's been very rare that we've had a campaign that in month one, you know, what I'm saying unless the budget was crazy, just had produced like crazy results. Typically, it's like we're setting them up to where a month, two, three months later, shit is really snowballed and taking yep. off, right? And so I think a lot of people just don't even have the patience to run a good digital marketing campaign. Right. Um, because Especially when you're small. Yeah, right? exactly. You can't make shit happen in a yeah. week when you're small. Yeah, bro. You you make it happen in six to nine months, you're lucky. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then even I kind of always understand, too, the people who are already in the label system making that argument because the label system in my head is a bunch of people that have seen anomalies. You know what I'm saying? Like we've all at that <laughs> stage, you've seen some things that didn't make sense. But I had a guy telling me a couple months ago about a artist he helped pop off for like a thousand dollars, but now I just went stupid off that yep. money. It's like, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, that doesn't happen a lot, right? Like you found, you found a golden lottery ticket. You know what I'm saying? Like cling to that motherfucker and make sure <laughs> make sure it keeps going because you you might not be seeing that again you know what I'm saying no time soon we've had campaigns like that right well yeah. like on paper it's like damn this shit does not make sense but hey this shit's still going we're gonna yeah. we're gonna keep riding it so I think that crowd of people specifically has a different viewpoint on it because unlike let's say maybe us no not us because we've seen more but let's say unlike the average artist where maybe you see like one anomaly in your whole lifetime right if I'm a label exec if I'm a marketing person, if I'm an A and R, I've seen anomalies enough times to know that they're possible. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the anomaly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm searching for that artist that I can put a thousand dollars into and get a hundred X return. Not the artist necessarily I could put a thousand dollars into and get a twenty percent return. Right? That'd be great. Right? That's that's mm-hmm. not that's good. But it's not mm-hmm. the motherfucker that gave me back a thousand X. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what I think people at that level are looking for. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but because we've done both, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what allows us to maintain that patience. But like you said, yeah, we've seen and been the spearhead for many anomalies, right? Yeah. And you look at their level, people don't even get to some of these people's level unless you're an anomaly. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. And once you have that, I'm going to call it anomalytic event, <laughs> <laughs> right? Now you're in the game. You have a brand or something that can now be used to create more attention, right? Because yeah, you did yeah. something that got attention, just like we talk about Drake is Drake, right? Of course, you don't have to be at that level to now be known enough to now do things for free that get, bring attention and maintain. So you're not used to spinning from ground up and getting that ball rolling. And by nature, the first units of energy are going to be the hardest, mm-hmm. right? It's going to bring the lowest return because you're just trying to get it to the point that it's going downhill. But people are already running downhill by the time they get to many of these people and even the people who have a more a better understanding that okay you have to break an artist they i feel like they struggle with that in between still like all right how much is it how do i know it's worth it because i only know it's worth it if this shit is popping Mm -hmm. i only know it's worth it if you know i'm getting a certain amount of views streams are moving crazy everything else in between feels like i'm probably not doing something right where we see it day to day like okay this person's on path Mm -hmm. right 
and it might take six more months, but we know they're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So since we're clear on that, we don't mind continuing to move the ball down the field in that direction versus, oh, this ain't working. We know it worked. It didn't work as much as we wanted to, but it did work. So, yeah, I think that, of I don't think, I know digital marketing works, right? Like, we basically built our entire career Should off of digital work, we marketing. We wouldn't be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, we, we would not be here if it didn't work. We've done too much, made so much pop. I mean, we got digital marketing on both sides. Our presence, mm -hmm. ourselves as a company and faces, right? And our clients, right? Mm -hmm. So, it works, right? And our bank accounts, right? All sides have, are, <laughs> have happened because of the digital environment. So 100% it works. Um, but hey, if y'all have some some uh, beef with digital marketing and alternative thoughts, we've already seen plenty of them. But hey, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below, of course. We, we're, we're all with it. And if you're just listening to the pod, you know, just think. Just, 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 <laughs> just, just fight us in your mind. Debate us in your mind. Scream it. I know some people just uh, like because I've done it before. You, you be debating somebody you're like, bro, no, it's a lie, <laughs> but you can't say anything to him. You're like, ah, he's so wrong. Just, just you know, <laughs> channel that energy to something positive, you know, and thank us for it later. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free, but the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Now, the next thing we want to touch on is Gucci Mane dropped the 80 song album. Crazy. But, but what's the best part about this? I'm going to skip to what I think the best part about this. Crazy. Is this part right here. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. The fact that it's longer than the Titanic and they're marketing that. That is fucking marketing, bro. Yeah. That's marketing. That y'all don't understand how big that detail matters. It's something that people can reference. A lot of people know culturally that it's a long ass movie mm -hmm. and it's a picture in your head. All right. 80 songs, that's a big number and that's meaningful in itself just cuz most people aren't used to hearing 80 songs. I know Chris Brown did like 30 or 40 um a couple years ago. But you lose the steam on that really quickly because a number is a number. People have to feel it or relate to it emotionally. So to say it's longer than the Titanic and to make sure that's pushed out there, you better believe that shit is intentional and somebody smart is the one behind like making that that uh, analogy. So shout out to whoever did that. And y'all keep that same thing in mind as well. Uh, a great example of this as well is Apple. They would do the same thing when they came out with the iPods. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest in peace of the iPod. <laughs> they would be like, um, instead of just talking about there's however many terabytes or megabytes, whatever their, their measurement was at the time, they understood that most people can't relate to that. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't speak the technical language. So to just say a thousand songs in your pocket, right? It clicks. I can have a thousand songs in my pocket and I'm used to CDs, right? Because we were still on the education curve at that point where people weren't used to having non-physical product, the market as, as, a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So like that type of language communication, creating that picture, man, it, it goes a very, very, very long way. Longer than the Titanic is in that similar space. So always keep that type of thing in mind when you want people to actually remember something about whatever you're marketing and pushing. Those are my initial thoughts on that. What you what you got, Ja'Cory? I was just, my, my initial thoughts was like, man, that shit long as hell. I ain't gonna lie <laughs> to you. I wasn't yeah. even thinking about the imagery aspect because now that makes me wish that he had a longer campaign around that. Maybe like here are 
I can see a IGPR campaign being here are all the things that this album is longer than. You know what I'm saying? The the mm. I don't know the space landing, bro. You right? The Titanic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shit like that, bro. Like really lean into the narrative. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, one, I think if you're a Gucci fan, this isn't this isn't abnormal of him. He just hasn't done this in a while. But this is like 20 or 2000. How long has Gucci been around? Like 07, 06 or some shit like that. Yeah, maybe somewhere around there. Maybe let's. I, I feel Let like see. somewhere between like maybe oh five to oh nine. Probably this will be five. Yeah, oh five. Yeah, yeah. Probably maybe you know. I'm sure there's some people like are you two thousand four or three whatever yeah. whatever. We're not talking about the bottom bottom. You know the get level one of the streets. But yeah, you can at least get into. 2005, 2000, I, so icy was probably like 2005. Yeah, I, I know, hey man, that, around that time I was still in the country, like Sean just said, we had CDs back then, so Gucci had not yet made it to my parts of the foreign land. Um, until, 2005, I just looked it up, so icy came out in 2005. Yeah, so yep. so this is old school him, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's very well known for dropping a lot of music, so going back to that, hey, let me take an old business model and bring it to updated times. Mm. I don't personally like that because I think there's a reason that those many uh, those type of projects died out. I think there was us as consumers very, very clearly saying like, "Bro, I'm not trying to listen to 80 songs in a row." <laughs> and I was like, "Now I'll be real with you, bro. Like sometimes I'll be struggling with like an hour 15 album, but I was like, damn, man, we don't mean it 42, but this shit got six more songs ago. Like that's crazy. Like yeah. I like I like the other stuff I heard. So I don't know. I think it's an interesting callback to his roots." But a little unnecessary, you know what I'm saying? Unless there's some like underlying game to it that we're not thinking about. I mean, the headline itself, right? The, well, the amount of songs itself and that being a thing might get this talked about more than if it was just a regular project from them. No, I agree with that. Yeah, right. like when you made the Titanic point, that's when it clicked for me. Like, oh, you're right. The narrative is, is more of the pusher than probably the actual music is. Yeah. Because it, it is exciting in his own because nobody's doing that. Nobody, yeah. like I said, other than Chris Brown with 40 songs, bro, it's like, yeah. okay, they probably feel like, if we want the, that to be the narrative, we have to top the last person to make that narrative. Mm -hmm. Chris Brown, yeah, 40 songs, still makes me feel like they could have got away with 50, you know what I'm saying? They have the 80, but I get it. Let's double it, go big or go home, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, they, he did they 40. We going yeah. that much to be longer yeah. than the Titanic, man. I don't, yeah. I don't know if they, if that was a, you know, a prior narrative, <laughs> hey, let's throw on a couple more yeah. or it was something that was clicked afterwards but like you said it can definitely be a campaign where you do more objects and mm -hmm. it could be become a meme mm -hmm. right like i don't know sitting here listening to gucci project uh project and then i don't know two days pass right mm -hmm. or you compare it to or like you make you roasting or something like gucci project longer than i don't, I don't even want to throw in immediate things that came to my mind <laughs> <laughs> actually but <laughs> But like, yeah, you could you could have a billion different things that you go through with a campaign like that, and just make that as mean. Because I don't, I don't think people are gonna listen to eighty for real. To your point, that's not something people want today. But I think it's not that people never wanted it, right? I think before it actually fulfilled a need or a space that couldn't be done in the same way because the streaming platforms didn't exist. The internet didn't exist and it wasn't as accessible. Like I, iPads, iPods, right? Going back to that conversation, they were just hitting the market. iPod probably hitting like 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. It was still like, yo, you got an iPod, bro. I'm about to steal that shit from you because this shit's worth money. Yeah. Like it was still in that <laughs> type of time. So a lot of people didn't have access to a lot of music, which means if I flooded at that time, you can become my whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I got all these options. So not only is, are you competing with like other people in general, I'm going to critique your music at probably a higher level too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before, I, I'm just going to take whatever I want. You know, the, they say a lot of the Master P's music wasn't all that good in some ways. Da, 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 da. He got his hits, but he was able to flood the streets. Flood people's lifestyle, so now I'm only looking forward to what he's putting out yeah, and yeah. building the an anticipation. He was able to monopolize people's attention in their world, so I could definitely see the benefit of it back then. Today, I think that one change, the digital landscape, DSPs, and us having so much accessibility to content in general, 
us having those options takes away the willingness and attention span to even give to that type of project for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like I could I can understand the benefit of it from an algorithmic standpoint. There's 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 are like eighty different chances for something to hit. That's all right? another thing. Yeah, the yeah. algorithm. So something yeah. could pick it up, move it off. You know, this one shoot over there, this one shoot over here. We all shoot up in eighty different directions and all it comes back. Right. That I get. That I get. But it, to me it ignores the core fan experience with it. And it's just like now you're harassing me for the sake of gaming the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? Like don't, well not me, cause I'm not the craziest Gucci fan, but like me, me as a, me hypothetical fan, bro. It's like, don't abuse me to 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 get your industry narrative out there, bro. Don't, yeah. don't do that to me. Cause that is not the same thing, <laughs> to be clear, right? <laughs> gaming the algorithm, like getting algorithmic favor and actually getting streams is not the same as having fans mm -hmm. and making a moment out of it. That's, I mean, that's just a real thing. And I feel like that's lost on artists sometimes because they're so focused on thinking about the algorithm. Obviously, the artists who are trying to come up, like I'm trying to get these streams, mm -hmm. da, da, da. you can have plenty of those streams and it could be real streams and not relate to fans or not add to the fan experience at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. just an outcome. Yeah. Or there might be things that you do to favor it that your core doesn't like. Right. You know, and then so then it becomes the battle of who's the most important in the moment. Is it more important that I activate my core fans and, you know, X, Y, Z there? Or is it more important that I do these things that get these other entities fucking with me, moving me in a certain position, right? Like, that's always going to be the the battle Balance. I think you have. Yep. You, you have to find as a as an artist is when you go left, when you go right. This, to me, is the moment where he went. He went a little left, you know what I'm saying? A little left. Yeah, it's hard to see. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Gucci's business, but it's. I wonder what the benefit would be other than him, him just doing his old school stuff. But mm -hmm. if it was like from an industry standpoint, what benefit is it for him? Um, so you might be trying to get ahead of this leak situation. This uh, leak situation. Yeah, I've been hitting motherfuckers with the leaks oh. left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to give you all the yeah, chance yeah. to put out 80 songs. I'm going to put out 80 songs. Hey, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I was thinking you were about to say somebody... Gucci had like a threat that somebody was gonna leak his shit, but no, yeah, you talking about the general leak, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I mean, they got Nudie, they got Lotto. Apparently, they're attacking Atlanta, bro. They are coming for. Atlanta. I didn't know they got Nudie. Yeah, bro, Nudie got hit like last week, like 160 oh. songs or something crazy. Dang. Exactly. Dang. So okay, well, <laughs> let's consider this though too. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. That's real tough. The artist in the fan relationship is a relationship all about curation when you think about it mm -hmm. right i like you because i like the music you make but you've selected the music that you allowed me to hear right mm -hmm. selected or the production right that's all selection the way you dress the way you talk all these things are things you have selected and you are an individual tastemaker right so me as a fan i appreciate that and then once you do this i feel like you're violating Cause you're no longer taste making. You just throwing shit out there. Mm -hmm. It's almost like yeah, we talk about advertising some bad music on my playlist mm -hmm. because I'm just taking money from it. That's that similar space that you're feeling is being violated in that agreement. It's like, yo, man, you you are taking advantage of the love <laughs> that I've committed to you. You knew I was gonna invest, and now you're putting me through the ringer. It's abuse, actually. It's fan abuse. It is abuse, exactly, bro. That That's exactly shit is fan abuse. Is. And, you know, maybe there's the, the fan parts of his fans that, that love this and want this from him. I'm not one of those people who want that from anybody that I like. No, Period. You know what I mean? I'm good. I'm cool with just and one Even song, those fans that say they want it lying. You say what? They lying. The ones that say they want it lying. That'd be the same don't ones know, don't make it past the fifth track when the album come out. Like, oh, I wish, <laughs> wish you dropped 40 songs. It's like, no, you don't. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah. These fans yeah. don't know what they want, bro. No, nah, oh, that's a fact. That's a fact. You just got to give it to them, see how they act. <laughs> like, I want 80 songs. Like, mm, no, you don't. You want 15. Here you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, look, more power to Gucci. Hopefully, the project does whatever he needs it to do. Yeah, I'm sure he got some bops on it, man. Yeah, you, know. you know? It is it is goo up, bro. You, you got to find him, though. Yeah, exactly. You gotta, yeah, you go ahead and get that shovel so you can... <laughs> You can dig and find them. Should have searched, bro. It's gonna take yeah. me the whole week to listen to it. Yeah, yeah that that's that's the thing. It's just time. It's the time. And okay, this is where a problem comes with that too. <laughs> we talk about time. <laughs> Gucci's fan base has aged up 
Yes. Right? He has a lot of cultural respect for the younger people. The people, like, we're probably the youngest of his main fan base, right? Like, our age range. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else is older. So, think about the time that they actually have for real. Because they got kids. They got work. They got just other shit. Hobbies. Taxes. Hobbies. You know, <laughs> Christmas time. Especially around Christmas time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, the their ability to consume in that way is not even there mm-hmm. in the same. So yeah, I don't know. I would love to hear the thought process around it outside of just narrative. And I'm sure that he's gonna find the ones that hit the most. Like nobody, nobody's nobody is dropping 80 songs and all 80 of them hit. It doesn't even mean that all of them aren't like good to a certain quality. We're just talking about the shit that's gonna make culture move. You yeah. know what I mean? Nobody's doing that. So I would love to see if something gets pulled out of it and they look to push it further, though. Hey, songs, bro. It's at least three. At least three. Got to be. Hey, yeah, playing the numbers, bro. man. On the Gary Vee shit, I guess. I mean. so if we only expect one from a 15 to 20 song project, I need at least three out of this one. Mm. At least. Mm. That's fair. See, so now you're judging. You're right. Now you're right. You got to have a hit. Yeah, your your hit rate. I'm a picky fan, bro. I, I've done it. Hey. Uh, I put my my boots and my artists, you know what I'm saying, next when it comes to that shit, bro. Now I need the best from you. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, look, we got another topic for you guys. And this one I actually love, man. Put out by one track. I thought it used to have another letter on it. I did too, bro. I, I thought I was you tripping. Know, bro, you I, I, was, I wasn't going to say nothing if you didn't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you just threw us all off. It used to be like one track M or something. I don't know, whatever. All right, but Josh Wexler, man, like shout out to you. I don't know if you put your government out there, but it's already out there now. Shout out to you and the one track page. Y'all go ahead and check it out because they have a lot of dope po- uh, posts. Definitely support. But this is the advice that he actually gave. I should have put this in the advice column. So rate this as advice <laughs> as well. <laughs> we want to know what y'all think. Why every artist should market their marketing. We're going to read what he said. All right. Marketing is an art form itself. Mm. And sometimes the creativity of one's marketing has more potential for a viral moment than the music itself. Mm. What this means (laughs) is that in those cases where your marketing efforts to promote the music stand out to a significant degree, you should advertise those attention grabbing marketing attempts rather than the music in order to build your social profiles and repeat listeners. Mm. All right. He wrote a lot, so I'm not going to go through all this before we stop. For Baby Tron's most recent album rollout, his marketing team had an incredibly detailed 3D billboard put up in Times Square, which can be seen on the next slide. And they used footage of it to make their hype, make the hype he had in New York viral on the internet. Because it was good content about a big artist. Okay. Because it was good content about a big artist, I imagine that they received free marketing from this as well because posting it could likely lead to growth for any platform. Mm -hmm. All right. Bet he's hitting on all the points. All the points are being not touched on right here. Let me see if I can go to this next slide so people can actually see what the Baby Tron post of the billboard look like. Check this out, folks. Mm. Oh yeah, that shit was hard. I remember seeing that. Yeah, beautiful. You know, listeners, y'all come to the episode so y'all can see. You know, but yo, marketing the marketing is the thing. It's it, it's the truth. It's what we talk about all the time. We never spe- explicitly say it in that way, but that's what we're telling people to do all the time. Even when we just talked about literally the Gucci project, mm-hmm. we just said the narrative can go bigger the than song. the project, the yeah. songs itself, right? Marketing your marketing, as he said, is an art form itself. I am going to go ahead and say, like, this is top tier advice. I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. And not only that, if we allude to the conversation about 2 chains we had probably like six episodes ago, your marketing, if you market well, you always have great creativity and presentation and packaging in relation to your brand. That now becomes something that not only fans appreciate and experience, but other brands appreciate experience. Mm-hmm. Just like Two Chains became 
the head of marketing or I forgot the actual position, but he was head of that advertisement campaign for Crystal, right? Yeah. They say, oh, I appreciate this person's mind, their perspective. They can add some creative value to my campaigns or to my fashion brand if people appreciate the packaging of how you dress right you always have a certain sense of style style everything you do should be marketed individually and has its own potential to blow right your fashion can be a brand or a thing in of itself your uh music is a thing in and of itself as an artist every bit of you is something that you should you should be look to, looking to monetize and market as its own level of greatness mm -hmm. so not only does he hit the nail with the marketing aspect of it, you should market everything that you do in its own way. Of course, that becomes easier as you get bigger. But as he said, especially for a large artist, literally, you just sharing that you did this, right? Become something that can move virally because pages already want to talk about it because it's something that creates conversation mm -hmm. and creates growth for themselves. And that's the one of the like go-to tricks i call it like a one-on marketing one-on-one -on -one trick at this point to me literally create a billboard you only need one of them and then share it with the internet <laughs> people say billboards aren't valuable but billboards still have the value just because it's something in the physical world and when you share that something happened in the physical world in the digital world mm -hmm. it feels more real mm -hmm. it feels more cool so you know you can think well, far beyond just billboards but like, all you need is one. You can pretend like you did it in the whole city. Honestly, I've had people to do it. And I did this with companies, like, when it, it wasn't even, um like, before I was even in music. You could just Photoshop a billboard and just say you did the shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows, man. You know what I mean? Nobody knows where it is. If anything, that creates commentary. Well, where is it? Hey, that's engagement on this post. Let them views go up. So... So no, no, I, I love this marketing, your marketing um, comment. And, I, and, you know, you're getting your love on this. The next 10 times I say it, at some point, I might forget to cite you, but know that you got it this one time right here, <laughs> <laughs> Josh. So, you know what I mean? The, 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 the love has already been exchanged. What you think, Corey? Yeah, but I just like the the love to the the art form that is is marketing, bro. Yes, you know what I'm saying because I feel like it doesn't get enough credit. One hundred percent for being an art form the way it is. Like, bro, I'm stringing together this copy and this content, mm -hmm. bro. Like, come on, man. <laughs> so, but no, I think you already hit a lot of the main points. But there are gonna be times where I think as an artist, you have to accept that your music might not be the most interesting focal point of the campaign. It's great when it is. It makes everybody's job so much easier when it is. <laughs> But there are times when realistically it's not, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then that kind of is when it comes down to how savvy is your marketer or you as a marketer to be able to create a conversation point out of what might be mid, you know what I'm saying? Like to be real with you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because um, good marketing is going to elevate a mid song, you know what I'm saying? Like good marketing is going to take an amazing song and get it out of here, right? But either way, it's going to level up the situation mm -hmm. if you if you win it. So. I think it's just what it is, bro. Like you said, and, and I like that he framed it with big artists. I think big artists are the ones who get the leverage to be able to step outside of the music for the narrative a lot of the time. When you're a small artist and you're building your audience, nah, we a lot of times don't want to hear about none of the other shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, unless the music is 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 good, that's attached to it. Like the Eam Triplin situation, right? Like it's like narrative leads back to good music. You know, or at least, you know, good to okay music, depending on how you're looking at it. So we cool with here, right? Versus if they led back to some trash, would it have been as talked about? Right. As, so, it, as it was. And I'm glad you brought his situation up because there's a nuance to the market you're marketing as well, right? This is blatant marketing of clear marketing, right? Mm -hmm. It's a billboard, which we know is marketing, something you do for that type of effort. Or you could have a flyer for your concert and it's super dope or whatever. Or you covered up a whole um, establishment, you know what I mean? And you market that. But people know that that's marketing. Mm. You look at the EM Triple situation. That, too, was marketing. They contrived some events and then they marketed that, mm -hmm. right? But that itself was marketing in, in beyond the music. So that it's a top-down um, analogy where you have the very clear, but it, there's nuances in between where, look, just market yourself doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Of course, it's it like, you know, why and what you're doing matters, but 
just market yourself doing stuff other than the music. Yeah, that's a good point too because now if we, even if we take it outside of, and you already kind of touched on it, but if we take it outside of just fan perspective and we go back to industry, your peers, people mm-hmm. you're networking with, but they want to see proof that you out here doing things and taking things as, as seriously as, as mm-hmm. you, you want them to believe you are. And I mean, one of the most well-respected things across the music industry in every circle is how the marketing is executed, bro. Everybody in every oh, yeah, genre, yeah. At every entity, everywhere respects a good marketing plan that put that was put together and Hell worked out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it, it, a lot of times your marketing can be the way that you convince these people that you feel like a power player that you want in your corner to take you seriously. Because, yeah. you know, like that's the part. Everybody knows that marketing is one of the hardest parts of building the artist up, I would say. Like, it's... it's easily top three one of the most expensive parts um could be argued top five the top ten is one of the harder things to do you know what I'm saying depending on who you are if you us you know what I'm saying <laughs> if you everybody else I can get why you might rank it where you rank it you know what I'm saying um so it's like everyone in the industry respects a great well executed marketing campaign everyone from the A&R at mm-hmm. the label to the to the, the goddamn show promoter you know what I'm saying at the, mm-hmm. the concerts you're pulling up to man, we nerd out on that shit man yeah exactly yeah. bro like like they love it so it's like here's your way to show your fans hey I make real world moves right or things in real life happen around me because that's essentially what you're doing by marketing your marketing showing them like hey things happen around me in real life so if you just show your industry peers like, hey, I am making things happen around me in real life, whether organically or, or you know, through me executing some elaborate marketing plan I put together. Mm-hmm. Either way, it's a win-win, bro. I'm showing my fans that I do shit in real life, which like you said, fans love it when they feel like their internet person is making moves in, in the real world. Like we all love that, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then people in the industry love to see that your internet Celebrityism is translating to some real world shit. It's, hey, this looks like a safe investment. It's gonna be equal equate to more than just streams and views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So marketing your marketing is a win win across the board. And yeah. and like I say, it puts more respect on the name of the marketer, bro. You know, way more. Hey. You know, people gotta respect our paintbrush. You know what I'm saying? Our pen. <laughs> you know. And I start writing down these KPIs and these target results, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's magic happening. See, that's that's, that's the thing. <laughs> people don't care about the numbers like that. The people yeah. want the numbers, but people don't care about the the technical aspect of the marketing, mm-hmm. right? They don't care about the science of it. They care about the art or they appreciate the art. It's hard for them to truly appreciate the, mm-hmm. the science of it. But of course, that's what I've always loved about marketing, that it is art and science. And the best ones can be creative, be artful, but it impacts the science, right? It moves mm-hmm. the numbers. It's not just, oh, you're doing some cool creative looking shit. But it doesn't impact anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's when people get lost. You, they're either over there or they're your super number focused and you're moving a needle. But you can't get those exponential results from just doing the technical shit either. You're just kicking the ball down the field. It's like you're watching football and they keep doing the short passes. You could get there eventually, but it's never going to be that sexy, entertaining thing that people are playing the highlights. And it goes you know, through the roof, share on every channel, people are talking about it. So when you want to go big, you're still going to need the long ball and Randy Moss to catch that bitch with one hand over three niggas. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you need to have some art, something that's beautiful, cool, that can be worth having a conversation about. But that's that balance. And I feel like most people not only struggle with it, most people don't know that that's what they're struggling with when it comes to marketing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just said it too. Like, I think it's just the language barrier, right? Yeah. Like, they don't know how to communicate that and yeah. things outside the numbers. So, like, an artist might be saying, hey, I want 10 million views on my video. Right. But what they're really saying is I want an impactful moment that seems larger than life, right? 10 million views is just the way they know how to, to quantify it or express yeah. it through what the way they understand it comes from digital marketing. Hey, I, the last artist I saw get 10 million views – you had a larger than moment life. So that's what yeah. I want. 10 million views, right? It's like, mm, you really want the moment. That moment could come before that that, that point, right? Yes. Um, or there might be a lot more that needs to be done to make you have the potential to get that type of moment. But yeah, I think it's just a language barrier. You know what I'm saying? We got people who who speak the language of marketer, marketers and marketing like very loosely. Because what, what do you see in the internet? You see numbers being talked about, KPIs, cost per clicks, cost per whatever. Like, that's what gets talked about in, in, in tandem with marketing a lot of the time. Yep. Um, or you see like these bigger, larger than life marketing moments that are very inaccessible to you. And so you think that either marketing is either all 
clicks and likes or it's all these big, larger than life moments mm-hmm. that happen all the time. It's like there is a middle ground between both of those. You know what I'm saying? And you know <laughs> why marketing is so disrespected, right? Because everybody feel like they can do it, bro. It's a course out there. Exactly. Course around every corner, bro. Everybody feels like they can do it because it's one of those few fields that people can do it by mistake and reap the benefits. Yeah. And because they reap the benefits, they think they're good. Yeah. But you have, you can't keep repeating it because you don't know why. Mm-hmm. You can't break it down. So sometimes, you know, you can explain what someone did and they'd be like, well, no, I wasn't thinking about all that. That's cool that you weren't thinking about all that. That's it just happened for you. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That might even be why it worked because you were able to do it so authentically (laughs) and you'd have to worry about acting it out. But that doesn't mean that it didn't work because of the principles that are true. Then you apply that across the board, right? For an actual marketer and a true marketing strategist, you're able to do it again and again, apply it to these multiple situations in a way that feels authentic. That's what marketing really is, Mm. right? But yeah, again, so many people blow up, go viral, all these different things without even understanding why. And they think they're a marketer. They think they know better. They they do it on one platform and understand that you learn how to hack a platform, which means you might have some marketing talent in you, but that doesn't mean you know how to apply it to multiple platforms. If the landscape completely changes, you can figure it out real yeah. quick. That's what like that's what a true like marketer will will, will be able to make happen. So look I know artists y'all feel disrespected, but you know we feel for you in our own ways. Yeah, because we 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 feel disrespected multiple times over. Yeah, one more person tell me they know how to market because they can set up a Facebook ad, bro. I'm gonna lose it. Lose my <laughs> shit. Hey, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But did you just square up? Did you put your fit? <laughs> hey, put it there. Put them there. Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey. Jacory got them paws for y'all, dog. He got them paws for y'all. Oh, thanks, bro. Oh, uh, let's uh, be, like they got some more added. He added another example, so let's put this back up. Metro booming. Um, see, I was, I feel weird for saying the G and booming because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about something else. Example two. I was trying to stop myself. <laughs> example two. <laughs> uh, Metro booming's project. Heroes and villains had more of a market the concept approach. The concept of the album was that of a sequel to his Not All Heroes Wear Capes from 2018. The idea is that all of the features and producers on the project fall into the category of either a hero or villain. Mm -hmm. This created a conversation about the album separate of the music, which resulted in tons of free marketing as well. All right, next slide. Some features that I think, uh, okay. He's showing a slide example of someone. I think it said, let's see what it's supposed to say. Some features that I think we can see on Metro Boomin's new Heroes and Villains. All right. He's just talking about some of the conversation that came from Metro Boomin's post. All right. And that. So if you think you took any value from this, shout out to Josh um, and One Track. Go ahead and follow him. If y'all got value from that post or find him, you know what I mean? Now, going back to Metro Boomin's uh, project. That was something that was very clear. I mean, we kind of talked about it, right? It's a project that was more about the experience, right? The production Mm -hmm. of itself as almost a mini movie is not a project that's built on singles that are supposed to go crazy. Yeah. Like he built the album soundtrack to his own movie. Yes. He built the soundtrack to his own movie. Yeah. Right. And there were some moments that, like I said, I wish, like the weekend track, I feel like could have really been something if they really leaned into it. It should have been an all weekend type of track. If I was trying to make a hit, I feel like that could be a weekend hit. And I don't think it needed a rapper on this song as much as I love 21. And that's the first song I ever felt like. And I could have went without 21 on that in terms of like a feature collab. What was another song off of that project that could have been a hit single if maybe it wasn't in the scope of that project that didn't that wasn't seeking for hit singles in that way? Mm. I have to look at a track list. That's a that's a yeah. that's a deep question. <laughs> that's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, that's All a right. deep question. Like, could have been a hit without the if it wasn't in the context of the rest of it, right? Because it, you know, and it was intentional about being a hit, right? Yeah. Not even just the context of it, but just because of the context, they didn't seek to make it a hit. So they added production, you know, all these production things that took away from that. 
it's a different approach. Like, oh no, we're building this for a soundtrack. We're we're gonna add a separate feature, a separate feature here, or we're going to change the production up here to mimic a change of scenery or mood versus we're just trying to produce an earworm worm and see this thing playing on the radio so people are bumping it in the clubs or their, or their cars. It wasn't about that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, let, me, let me whip out my old Spotify real quick. All right. Because, I mean, I'm, my first instinct is on time, the intro song. That one, I don't know if I could have seen that one being a hit. That one was one of my favorite ones. No, the though. second half of it, bro, without the... Oh. Yeah. See, Let me out the first half. Yeah, the second half of see, it. See, that's... You're proving my point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? There were like points of the song. If you think about, and this is what producers do today all the time, right? Once sampling became a thing, right? They would literally take these old ass songs, right? And just take that one part that could have been a hit and then make a hit out of that one bit of the song. Like if you listen to, uh, you know, Shawty Lowe, what's the official name of that song? They know. They know. There we go. Yeah. If you listen to Shawty Lowe, they know and find the song that it was made from is one of Mandrill songs, right? And that's like an old group. Literally, that song sounds nothing like that except for that five seconds of the song. Mm. And they literally took that five seconds of the song and just played it the whole song. Yeah. The rest of it is so detached. If you think about like how different the beginning of that uh, song that you're referencing of Metro Boomin's mm. sounds in the second one. I mean, you're talking about hearing flutes, church bells. Yeah. It's stupid different, bro. Yeah. So I think what you're talking about right here like yeah if y'all just lean into that second half of the song it, it could have been a hit but yep. it, that was uh which was it called again uh on time, with on time. but i get it though bro because like th yeah. that, that intro song is probably one of the best intro songs in a long time especially when you talk about the narrative aspect but i told you like my my interpretation of it you yeah know what I'm saying? and and just kind of what i was getting from it where it's yep. like yo this first half sounds like the superhero Showing up to save the day, like oh shit, about to be good. We okay, like Superman showed up, mm -hmm. and then you have the 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 beat drop, and that to me sounds like the part of the show where it's like you know the superhero goes and punches the villain, and they realize it doesn't hurt, and then it's like <laughs> oh shit, like this nigga about to fuck us up. Like no, the day is not saved. We actually just realized it got much worse because the person that came to save us can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? That's what that to me is what that transition from John Legend mm -hmm. to that future shit sounded like. And I was like, yo, this shit is beautiful. This shit is crazy, <laughs> bro. Like he just walked me there. So I get it. I get why they had to do it that way. See, that right there goes back to the importance of marketing your marketing, mm -hmm. making sure the concept is clear and clean mm -hmm. because now you went into it with that type of ear and perspective. Yeah, looking for that. And yeah. you have these visuals yeah. going through your head throughout the project. Yeah, that's true. It's that, a beautiful thing, The man. movie definitely set it up for it, but it's like, if, if any of you haven't seen the short movie he dropped with it, it, it does beautifully set it up. I would tear up if I was <laughs> a part of that project yeah. and you gave that description right there. <laughs> he, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, like that, that, that's a beautiful moment right there, bro. Yeah, you, bro. you just brought that shit all together, bro. It's like it, it's nothing like <laughs> making something creative, and then people get it. Yeah, that's true, bro. And from song one, like it didn't take me five, six songs to get into it. Like song one, I was like, oh no, nah, I'm I'm right where he wants me to be at, bro. Beautiful. I'm here, bro. I'm here for the heroes hey, in the village. Hey, talk about marketing and marketing. Remember when I said. Back to the two James. You market your shit. People respect your eye and the way you approach things. Yeah. And now they'll hire you for other stuff. If I'm a movie supervisor, music supervisor, hey, man, this dude can do all my soundtracks. And I know it's a soundtrack check out there. Yeah. So he might not be marketing <laughs> to the charts in that bag. But, hey, this is a catalog, right? Yeah. I, I always say artists. Well, I always say since the last three weeks, artist, your career is your catalog. And he just put out a catalog that shows that he can very well be a music supervisor or he can produce the soundtrack, right, for a scary movie, a superhero movie, and any other category that applies. Yeah, facts, facts. This shit is beautiful right here. This shit is beautiful. Um, Now let's switch to a whole nother direction. Cause, uh, cause Bryson, man, Bryson, man, you represent something right now. Look, I never really watched a Bryson Tiller interview, probably because Bryson Tiller was never doing interviews. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, he didn't really do a lot. Okay, so I, and I never looked at him close. He don't look Lebronish to you. I, I could, I could, I could see why you're saying that. I was like, this dude look Lebronish, man. I, I never knew. No one ever told me he looked like Lebron a little bit. Like, I don't, I don't think. Uh, 
I don't think a hundred percent of the way, but Not I, 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 yeah, you know, I can see you know where I, mean? I can see where you're going with yeah, that. Yeah. I think it's the beard. That's why I said ish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> LeBron ish. Okay, okay. All right, let's get let's get into this. Oh, no, so pop, you need an answer right now or right here. Would you say yeah? Yes. Hell yeah. Nice. Right. Well, I don't know. Some people it's are Rihanna. just like, <laughs> is it so it would only be Rihanna that would have to give you an offer to perform? Or is it like Super Bowls on the list of like bucket? All right. So I'm going to clarify. She's asking him, right, about the Super Bowl. Is he hype about performance for the Super Bowl or is he doing it because Rihanna asks? Actually, it's not confirmed that he's doing it, but they were just talking about the possibility because Rihanna's actually about to do the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So let me clarify that because I, I probably started at a weird place. Get list items. For me, no, I don't, I don't necessarily care about um, performing mm -hmm. like that, like especially not the Super Bowl. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, mm -hmm. who knows? One day, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to get on the mass singer. Enough. You know anybody? Huh? Huh? That's all I wanted to play. That right there. That right there. And this is why <laughs> these old folks be getting upset with these young <laughs> folks. Like, I don't really care about performing. All right. He don't care about performing. And then he said, especially the Super Bowl, which is, which is funny. And I'm not even coming from like a, I'm an old head being upset with it, but I could just see it. He like, damn, you know, and because he said it like without any energy is I'm saying something polarizing or I'm not, I'm not even saying like, I hate like, Oh, the old school, how they, I don't want to do all that. It's just like a, a it was pure in spirit. Like, mm -hmm. no, I don't really care. Yeah, I don't that. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? You don't care about performing. It's, it's a, and I just think it's such an interesting space that we're in musically that there are so many artists that share this sentiment. And there are so many artists, we go back to the narcissism conversation, that actually don't want to be seen, but they do want to get the music. And they actually want to try to figure out, how do I get both? My anonymity, an 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 I hate that word, and my success in music, right? Like, How do I remain anonymous while I get that success? And they genuinely want that. So I think it's, it's a, definitely a new type of artist that's able to find success. Um, but on the other side, I kind of hate the fact that there are so many artists that don't appreciate performing and still perform, right? Because that's the other part. Like, I also don't want to see you on stage, you know what I mean, mm. if you don't even care to perform. I mean, I probably so, have no choice. Yeah. Maybe in some situations. I mean, because that's how you get a bag, right? Yeah. A certain yeah. level of bag. So... I mean, it's not the only way you get a bag. Sometimes but you be owing bags. You said you what? Sometimes you be owing bags. So, yeah. <laughs> many, many do. <laughs> many definitely owe some bags. But it's just like, yo, if you got that out there that you don't like performing, me, as someone who really does truly appreciate a good performance, it's like, man, all right, well, I'm not going to go to your show. It's already bad enough if, if you're just not good at it. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't even care to do it. Now, again, like this is nothing to... Again, Bryson, I think he's very, actually very congruent in his old image and how he's presented himself the whole time through. Yeah. So it's not like he out there like just acting or like trying to do a whole bunch of shows and running it up in that yeah. way either. Yeah. Right. But man, it's interesting that this even exists these days. And you got a lot of artists who either not only do they not care to do it, let alone like the Hey, I don't care about the Super Bowl. This thing that's big to you, right? Eh, it's not big to me, right? That's just a natural of the changing of ties. But many of them are scared to perform, right? Or, you know, the anxiety. They don't like the experience that comes along with it. And I think that's that other conversation where some of them might just say, I don't like, and I, and I think, well, I don't care about, but it's more from a standpoint of, you know, mental health type things mm. that come along with it that they can't really get with. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's a it's, it's a little bit of fear in there, but I do get it. You know, we gotta think about they're also paying attention to the internet landscape. I see my influencer homies making a hundred k this month. All, all he did was live stream a couple of times. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and put some t shirts out, right? Like, oh, I see. You know, my other yeah. creative endeavor homie just putting out some shirts, and he's only doing shit. That he he ain't got to jump around on stage for forty minutes. You know what I'm saying? 
to, oh, to, to make this money. So I get it, bro. Jump Let's... around on stage. You said that. <laughs> like, like I'm your performance monkey type thing. <laughs> like on some minstrel shows type of stuff, man. Dang. I mean, basically, man. Yeah. So depending on how you look at it, you know, for the ones that love to do it, they probably don't see it that way. For the ones that don't like to do it, they 100% see it yeah. that way. You know, like, oh, you're just making me jump around on stage. <laughs> well, these people don't even really like it like that. So I get it. I think the, the, the music landscape has opened up enough to where those artists can even comfortably think that you know what I'm saying, like, because like you said, bro, 10, 20 years ago, this wouldn't even been a conversation. Get on stage, bro. Quit playing with me yep. today. He's like, you know what? Yeah, let's talk about it seriously. There may be a pathway to you being a successful artist without having to do that. But then, to me, that also requires a certain level of honesty from the artist about like how big that they really want to be. Because there's no way you becoming a super superstar artist without a good performance cadence. No way, hundred percent not. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you could and can be arguably a successful artist without ever touching the stage. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. and like it's That's very true. possible to 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 be in a good space and not have to do some of the traditional things that you would have to do to excel yourself to like that level of an artist. So like if, I get it. If you're an artist that doesn't want to be in this upper tier and you don't like performing, should I be trying to figure out how to make money without performing? You know what I'm saying, yeah. boy? I ain't got to leave the house <laughs> and 20k hit the account this month. But that would be beautiful. And there's too many ways to do it. Today. So many ways to do it, like bro. Like you said, man, it, it's a very, very possible thing. I mean, and, mm. and so many are doing it. I mean, that's just the same as us in many cases. Like, yo, man, like go into work. What you mean? Yeah, exactly, bro. Leave yeah. my house. It's like, man, I'm, I'm making all this money from the crib. Yeah. And you want me to leave the crib and make less or maybe just the same amount or maybe just a little more. Yeah. I don't know. I lost that. I lost that in peace of mind in my travel to get there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. I lost that drive a minute ago. But leave yeah. the house. Yeah. So uh, no, I, I definitely get that. I mean, I, I think a lot of if we if we relate to form, performing in its own way to showing up for work because that is they're showing up for <laughs> yeah, work, yeah. right? Going into the office. Eh, you know, I think that's a pretty relatable mm -hmm. <laughs> analogy. So like, I, yeah, I say this for the for the snippet sake of it. <laughs> 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 Gotta be aware. And, uh, <laughs> uh, artists showing up for their performance today is equivalent to regular job, nine to fivers showing up to work. Mm -hmm. Many people just don't want to do it. Yeah, bro. And you can get away with actually not doing it in the way the internet is set up today. <laughs> Uh, Zoom exists for a reason. Zoom exists for hey, bro. That'd be wild. Somebody try to do a a performance. A from Zoom, a Zoom call. Yeah, I watch yeah. that. At least once. Depending on who it I was. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's no difference than a live stream, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, quality might be a little off. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But at least they can share their screen. True. True. Okay. So yeah, even even that the, the proof of concept is damn near there. Proof of concept is damn near there. <laughs> All right, bet. So let's get here. We got this one last thing. Got to play and discuss. All right. Go here because Rich Homie, your boy Rich Homie Quan, says he couldn't drop music for two years. And I want to talk about the impact of that. Uh-oh. Let's go. So man. during that time, yes, of course, I'm looking at What does me. that do to your creative process? Oh, man. It, uh, you it probably, slowed me down. You probably got some hits in your headphones. Uh, <laughs> just making stuff for himself. Like, no, I was oh, definitely, man. Yeah, I was definitely still recording, but it was almost like, um, why, why record? Should I record? Should I continue to record? When I'm going through a litigation, I can't drop any music. I see my peers taking off. Yeah. So it was, it was depressing a little bit. Right. You know is, is it hard to see your peers taking off when... When you know you're like, damn, I'm on a sit down. Um, it's just more so hard to see. Yes, it was hard to see yeah. my peers take off for you know, because I was on a sit down. And the reason I had to sit down. Right, yeah, like, yeah. It wasn't like you said I'm like, going I want to sit down, but for litigate my lawyer, hey, look, man, you can't drop any music. You haven't even been paid for your regular stuff yet. So that puts a mind, you know. What about when mind. we got smooth like quarantine and pandemic? Were yeah. you creating then or do or does that take you down? even more of a slope like nah, pandemic definitely helped my creative process mm -hmm. around, around pandemic to be honest was the time like i started feeling myself again i started getting my mojo <laughs> back yeah, i'm just going through a okay. litigation with tig so i could all right oh man so there's a couple of levels of things that i want to talk about i'm gonna give you the context of this interview and like when he brought it up and why he brought it up but first 
we could just address the two years of not being able to drop music. It's very interesting to me. I think you talked about this beforehand, or you just mentioned like he didn't really make it known that he was in that period. Yeah, right? he was going through this. Yeah. He was going through this. And then, you know, I was like, yeah, because you actually do need to be like, yo, bro, I can't drop music. You got to get that attention because you can't drop music. Mm. Right? People, if you are not top of mind and people aren't hearing new music from you to judge, then a lot of people are just going to assume you fell off. All right? Mm -hmm. They're going to assume you, you you tucked away and things ain't going good for you. You down bad. If you say, I can't drop music, one, you get the attention to explain why you're not dropping music. Two, you have the ability to win people's hearts because you're going through a situation. Mm -hmm. So you get some empathy from people, right? And you build the story because when you come back, people want the story. They will remember that. Now you're giving them an episode of this story. Oh, he was going through it. Talk about a hero, right? Heroes and villains with Metro Boomership. People want to hear that story so now they can watch you rise from those ashes or at least see yeah. if you're going to be able to come back yeah. from it, right? <laughs> So you miss out on all that when you go through stuff like that and you don't mention it. It's the equivalent of like somebody going to jail and not letting people know they're going to jail. Not having the free meat campaign or something like that. Yeah. Or free who? Free X, right? X as in whoever. Put, put it in there. So like, because you because obviously you can't win on everything else. So at least lean into the narrative. But it might be an Atlanta thing at that time because if you really look at the 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 climate he didn't mention it and you know the Migos went through that too mm -hmm. right them not being able to drop music and I honestly you know I wasn't necessarily as much in the music industry at the time as well so maybe I would have known if I was like doing what I do today but I didn't really know that they were in a thing where they couldn't drop music and go into litigation until they were after, out of it and mm -hmm. they were talking about it in like a complex interview or something yeah all right. Yeah. Were you aware, like, when that they couldn't because of that specifically? No, I think the complex interview might have been when I learned about it too. And so, and that is why I give them a little bit in for the doubt. My guess is a lawyer probably told them not to talk about it, right? As much, right? And if we think back to that time specifically, like, social media wasn't looked at as like the place to air out your grievances, like it is. Yes, today. you know what I'm that saying. Is true. Like, Rich Homie Coin today probably would do that. Yeah. Rich Homie Coin back then, there was no blueprint for people really doing it like that. You yep. know what I'm saying? To think of it that way. I don't even know if we had live streams back then like that, right? The, the culture for it wasn't there. Yeah. So, so I give him the benefit of the doubt in that. You know, maybe even it was a situation where, and I don't want to speculate like too much, but, but I do give it some benefit of the doubt. There might have been some entity saying like, don't talk about it in that way. And with that being said, we are not legal advice. We are just oh, yeah, talking facts. strictly from marketing standpoint <laughs> and what we see there. So if you are down bad legally, refer to your lawyer first and foremost. <laughs> whatever we say. And then come back and like and subscribe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then make right, your right, way right, right back up here. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I do give them that benefit of the doubt. Like maybe someone's telling you not to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't know I could do it. Um but other than that, y'all agree with you, bro. If I was an artist today going through that, bro, I'm talking about it. Unless I unless there is some crazy legal repercussion on my side. Which, you know, like you said, talk to the lawyer because it might be. If it ain't, I'm talking about it. If it is, mm -hmm. I'm going to shut up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find... That's when you start leaking shit through fans. You know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey. But like these academics and shit. Hey, I got some sauce for you. You just can't tell nobody you got it from me. That's true. That's when artists start dipping and shit like that. Here's an example, right? Because <laughs> you do, you never know what could happen. Remember I told you that I was talking to somebody. I, I, like, I actually don't remember um, who specifically this was, but we were running a campaign for them. No, they... they inquired about running a campaign but the caveat was he didn't have social media oh uh, yeah i remember right? yeah, yeah and he couldn't be online at all which we you know like hey bro nah we we can't do it yeah it's but a whole thing bro <laughs> how did this come about he was in some kind of beef with some other person i don't even know if the other person was a rapper too but he was in a beef right i guess he stole their chain bragged about it on the internet and that caused more conflict down the road, da, 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 da. As it would. Of course. Of course it would. <laughs> so the judge was like, hey, bro, you can't use social media, right, at all. It's cut off. 
So then, of course, that's even worse than not talking about the fact that I'm in this case. I can't even at least create awareness with my post outside of my music. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, and just do normal people stuff and let people be a part of my day-to-day life or, or my dating or whatever your brand is, you know, however you move. So, you know, there are cases where, you know, depending on what the reason that you're in a situation is, it might make sense not to talk about the situation. Mm-hmm. Right? So, again, speak to the lawyers. Now, on the other side, the rest of the situation what the context of what he asked is Big Boy was talking about the splitting of Quan and Thug. Oh yeah. I get emotional thinking about it. Sad times. That that really that was one of the most meaningful points in my life, man. There was a you know how there's like these the best rapper of all time rankings and the best projects of all times. And then it's, you have your, I don't really give a fuck about that shit. This shit has impacted me more than any of those other things. Yeah. So I'm not in the race trying to say it's better than X, Y, and Z. You want to get objective? Cool. But the impact that shit had on me and the point of my life and where it caught me and how I was moving, the way I was moving and I'm not moving that way no more, it was perfect. It was perfect, man. So I have so much affection and affinity for that project right there. And then they split and in asking about the split, Big Boy asked, "Does how did he feel about like Thug taking off?" Mm. I think, ironically, we, we mentioned Amigos. I think Migos was one of the other peers, um, but specifically, he was asking, you know, Thug, and like, was he in the space of like jealousy, hatred? Uh, how did, how did that whole situation go? And that's when Quan brings up, well. The thing that hurt was I wasn't even able to drop music at that time, okay, right? Keep up. So you think about the perception. It's like the, a lot of the perception is like, "Yo, Thug just left that man like in his dust. Mm-hmm. He didn't need like he didn't need Quan, right? But Quan must have needed Thug just because Quan kind of you know quote unquote disappeared for a bit. And again, I didn't know that Quan was in the case. I didn't know what was going on. I did know that like Thug and Birdman was more the relationship and Quan was, wasn't a part of that as much as Thug bringing him over. So I knew he had probably some support that might have helped Thug even more. But I think that that's that type of thing that changes the, that changes how you see stuff, but fans a lot of times aren't privy to, which frustrates me sometimes about fan opinion because like you don't know what's actually happening or not. Yeah, and another reason why it would have been nice to have that out there, um, because you know, of course, I think that him and Doug both could have had like fruitful careers separately. Of course, I would have loved to see them uh, again, but also the way that shit hit me, it's hard to even repeat that. So maybe it's one of those things to like you know that's better left just as one in terms of that project yeah but um but yeah it's all these factors man there's so many factors in terms of the artist's perception and what they're able to do and how the team moves around it and this thug not this thug this quan situation is yet another example of it it's like yeah you split that's tough right and he said interesting enough that a lot of the beef was more so between their squads and not mm-hmm. Him and Thug, right? And I've heard that between a lot of different people. Right? It's like it's more our squads and not keeping them together than it is us ourselves. I, I think Birdman and uh, Master P has had like a similar story mm-hmm. where you know they come from certain places. Too much real life and blood has been shed. There's no way to truly bring it, to, um, bring it together, and it's just best to do your own thing. So it sucks to say that, but I also don't know if Doug would agree. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, Doug might be like, nah, nigga, it was you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to each to to each his own. But it's like you have that type of situation that creates some kind of split. And then now, like, what's gonna happen next? And in that period where people are like, what happens next? You have some real life going on like that. I don't know, man. Like, what what would outside of marketing your the fact that you're in it, right? Outside of like not, not considering the legal situation, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know. Outs, outside of just saying, hey, 
I can't drop music and trying to keep a conversation around yourself in that way. What else would you have done? See, if we go back to that time, I honestly don't have an answer for that time because that was so it was so different. Like mm-hmm. I think if that was happening today. If it was an artist of that level, I'd be like, bro, go stream. Like go be a Twitch streamer. Go mm-hmm. like go keep yourself in the conversation through other things. Like, um, who's a great example recently? Like T Grizzly. When T Grizzly was kinda yep. out recently for, you know, making more money off of streaming video games than he does with music. That was a great narrative yep. for him, in my opinion, right? Because it put him back in the conversation. It coincided with the music conversation. Um, and it, it, it was a way for him to stay relevant. And not saying he has a similar situation, but if he if he was in that type of situation, it's like we still think about him because he has this other thing going on. Yeah. Or I think about someone like Snoop, right? Snoop is super relevant when he's not dropping music because he he does so much shit to keep his face out there, right? He's doing shows with GQ and you know like Sports Center and shit like that, right? Like putting his face out there in other like media entities. So I don't know if the resources and the doors were open for it you know, 2013, 2014, Rishon and Kwan have been able to do that. So to that person, I genuinely don't have the answer for. It. It was like, whatever year that was, 2015, 20, whatever year that was, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Because the landscape was different. But I think what artists today can learn from that is that you are in a different situation. Someone telling you that you can't make music isn't the career killer like it was, shit, even like five years ago, you know what I'm saying, a couple of years ago, because you can find something else to find the attention to. Yep. So... That's the only thing I can think of, bro. I would have made a show, bro. Actually, they had YouTube back then, bro. I would have been on YouTube vlogging, grinding it out every day, bro. Like, fuck it. I can't, y'all can't hear me through the music. Y'all gonna hear me through this content shit, you know what I'm saying? And these vlogs, and I'm gonna get my grievances or whatever I'm thinking out through this since I can't give it to you through the music. That's what I would have did. That's what I think it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Create awareness some, some other way. You already have enough attention on you. So... Yeah, find another outlet to keep your name out there and and go with that. Yeah, bro. Oh, like, go do like a publicity stunt or something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Go like, <laughs> publicity stunt. And just don't reference the music. If you can't talk about it or whatever, so just let people ask and let even those conversations that come from it come because people might be like, why isn't this person dropping music? All right? Let that happen. You never answer it. All right? Or he's just... He keeps gaming. You know, it's going to be in the comments. Like, when are you going to come out with your next track? Like, people were doing Rihanna, mm-hmm. right? Like, when are you going to drop some more music? And it's been like, how long now? They said nine years? Or Too goddamn long. Crazy long. <laughs> crazy long. And then they get their answer when that answer comes. And you can mm-hmm. connect the dot. But as long, connect the dots. Because as long as that energy is out there in the universe, you can now make a connection with that energy. But if you're just absent... Yeah, what like we talk about is about maintaining the attention. If you can maintain the attention, yep. you can always flip it back to the music. Can always you can always flip it music. back. But if you lose the attention, then you best just start from ground zero. And that's even not if, a hard thing to do. Yeah, even if you're a bigger artist, like you might not be starting from complete ground zero, but in their eyes, you're, you're, you're back at ground zero. Yep, 100%. So I ain't seen from you. I ain't heard from you. You ain't sent no gifts. You know what I'm saying? You ain't put no bangers <laughs> out. You ain't featured on nobody's shit. Yep. Nah, bro, you got to work your way back up. Hey. You know, you know how it is, man. You can't just like any other relationship. You can't just disappear and come back and act like it's all good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you think I? You think I ain't listening to no other artists? <laughs> you think I ain't out here in these these e streets downloading albums, listening to singles, bro? Come on, hey, hey. So <laughs> I, I think that was a, a a very well stated approach. Yeah. And any artist going to do something today, y'all can. Take just that approach. Your thing might be different. You might not be a streamer. You might not be a, a YouTuber, whatever that looks like. You might get on TikTok, whatever that looks like. If you go and do one, re, one, because even if you're between tracks, I think that still applies. Yeah, 100%. All right? It's not even about can you drop music because you're down bad in that way. It's, it's not time to drop music again. Mm-hmm. So if you're somebody who actually would like to be or doesn't mind to be out there in front of people, because you're not going for the I don't want to be seen or bothered type of route, then these are the best ways to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Some other interest that is adjacent to the music or shoot, just you got it's a hobby of yours and let people you find a new fan base in that way, too, Mm because you're doing this new hobby. You do basketball. Next thing you know, people like, oh, man, like you like basketball and people like you for a whole other reason. So if your career or your music don't go like how you need it to now, you're up there doing basketball tournaments or streaming around basketball or 
they know that you like sneakers and you're showing up at sneaker con and shit like that, like Wale was doing, yeah. right? And being involved and doing sneaker collabs. So if anything, it's insurance. Yeah. At the very least. Now, with that said, that was our last topic today. This is episode number 14. Check us out Tuesdays. Check us out Thursdays. We're here. Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. Amazon. I think. Amazon. You know, probably Deezer and any obscure. You know, oh, the Deezer do podcasts? I don't know. Yeah, me either. But if they do, we on there. <laughs> if Audio Mac does podcasts, we on there. They probably don't. But if we would be. Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out.